So my name is Hai Pinchu, it's from Vice City University. Uh, this is my email address. So if you have any question, you can cut to me by the email address. So for today's pre presentation, I'd like to introduce a, a, a method related to particular system. So we can say uh, how to link discrete approach to continuum approach. Okay, some research have been involved in this work. Professor Ibn Yu from Monash University. Uh, he has been involved in the whole work and the other researchers that have, that have been involved a part of this work. So for today's presentation, I will focus on the description of a particular system. So we can say that a uh, discrete approach, continuum approach, and then we can say how to link discrete approach to continuum approach. And then so we can say some case study. So what is a material, uh, what is a particular system? So actually we can uh, find, uh, easy to find uh, such kind of material in nature and the industry. So for example, for sun, of sugar, rice, soya, dust. Uh, so actually particular material, it's the second largest material hunted by the human being. The largest one is the water and the, around the 70% of final and the, in the meat the products in industry are in particular form. So the start regard to particularly uh, material is very, very important. Uh, the physical property of a particular system is a very, very complicated and uh, three different flow regime, static uh, rapid flow regime and uh, slow deforming flow regime. So based on such kind of a regime or the system will show different uh, uh, behaving. For example, if I can say the static sand pipe, and uh, so it's similar to solid, so this is solid like behaving. And if we can say the avalanche, so particle will move along the sand pipe. And then, so this is a liquid like behaving. So actually, particular system. Uh, have two behaviors, uh, liquid uh, fluid and uh, salt like behavior. So understand of the physics of particle system uh, is still poor, compared with uh, water, compared with uh, other liquid and the solid. So there's uh, no general theory available to describe granular flow. So two types of uh, description about the particular system. So one is uh, at the particle scale, uh, particular system actually consists of uh, individual particle. So we can consider the system at the particle scale. So discrete element method is the most popular method for the, the study regard to particle scale. So we can treat the system as a continuum system, or if we can see the whole system, so we can extend it the theory from the conventional continuum approach to start particular system. So for example, it's a plasticity theory or kinetic theory. So we based on the different conditions, we use a different theory, consider the particular system based on continuum approach. Okay, for discrete element method, this is regard to the discrete uh, approach. So this method is based on Newton of motion. So I can see individual particle. So the equation of motion regard to relate to translation motion and the rotation of motion. So also we can see the energy as well. So if we can say that uh, 
for example, the translation motion. So we need to consider the force or counter force between particles. If there's a fluid, and then we need to consider particle fluid interaction force. Uh, for some conditions, we need to consider non quantical force as well. Uh, for example, if the size is too is very, very small, so we need to consider front was force. And uh, this is a very important to determine the model for the force. And for torque, we need to consider uh, torque from tangential force, and we need to consider the rolling friction torque for some special case as well. So it's a very important when we consider the discrete element to determine the force model. So there's a couple of force model uh, which have been uh, uh, used uh, widely in the simulation of particular system. So we have linear model and the nonlinear model or more complicated model. Or so some people actually use uh, or the linear model, other people use the uh, nonlinear model. Uh, based on our experience uh, for most of the case, uh, actually when we use the models, we can find the, the similar uh, result for the simulation of a particular system. So just for some special case, for example, if we consider just a one particle or two particles, and then so we can find the difference between the different model. Okay, for some case, we need to consider non contact force. So for example, if a size is small, we need to consider one to one force. Okay, if uh, the particle is white, we need to consider liquid the uh, bridge of force. Uh, if there's the fluid in the system, so we need to consider particle fluid interaction force as well, or this is some models uh, have been uh, used. Okay, for continuum approach or the common equation, including the equation for mass for linear moment and the angular momentum, uh, also including energy. Uh, for example, for this one, uh, if you can see the linear momentum, so we need to consider stress, we need to consider this term from the particle fluid to the interaction force. So we need to consider this term. So this term is related to non quantical force, including uh, gravity as well. Okay, so we need to solve this equation to find the, the continuum variables, or, but unfortunately we cannot directly get the, uh, we cannot directly solve this equation to get a value. So we need the ex extra equation necessary to consider the solution of a continuum approach. Uh, so we can, can say, uh, we can actually extend the convention, conventional continuum approach uh, to the uh, continuum description for the particular system. So this is some example, for example for elasto plasticity theory, uh, hyperplasticity theory, and the classical theory. So different theory, for example, for this one, this one is for the steady state flow, and the classical theory is for the rapid flow. And the, the challenge is there's no suitable theory for in the immediate flow region. Okay, this is uh, continuum approach. If we compare with this approach with uh, continuum approach, so we can find some advantage and disadvantage. For continuum approach, or we can use this approach to consider real physical system. Um, we can say the large system. But this advantage for the continuum approach, so it's because this is based on some assumption, global assumption, and also ignore the effect of some 
particle skill properties. So this is uh, the dis uh, disadvantage. But the disadvantage for continuum approach is actually are uh, the advantage for the discrete approach. So for discrete approach, there's a no local assumption and also including factor for microstructure. But uh, disadvantage for the description is uh, because the uh, because the limitation of uh, the ability for computer, so we cannot actually consider many particles as for the real system. So for real system, there are many particles. So normally, or uh, because it's a limitation for computers, so we can't consider the real system. But uh, as a development of the ability of a computer, and uh, then so it's possible to consider the real system by using discrete, uh, discrete uh, description. And then in the future, I think we can overcome this uh, issue to construct the con use discrete uh, element method to consider the real system. So at the current stage or discrete, uh, uh, discrete approach uh, is more suitable for fundamental research. And the continuum approach is more suitable for the applied research. So there's a challenge to develop an approach to overcome all of this problem. Uh, so, so here I'd like to introduce a method to provide potential to develop such kind of a theory. It's uh, the average method. So the link discrete to continue. Okay, so we can say this the common equation for the discrete approach. So this is based on the Newton of motion. And then so we conduct the average method or, and then so we derive the equation for the just it's a continuum approach. So this is a continuum approach. And then so we can link the discrete common equation to continuum common equation. At the same time, we can find the equation to show the relationship between discrete and the two and the continuum uh, variables. So for example, this uh, equations on uh, the left hand side we can say they show the continuum variables. Uh, for example, T is a stress. And uh, the right hand side relate to discrete variables. Or for example, for this one, the V prime, so relate to the fluctuation of velocity. So F is a force, the quantical force between particles. Okay, so we can use these uh, equations to determine the continuum variables. And uh, there's some advantage for this uh, approach. Uh, because this one satisfies, but this equation actually satisfies the common equation for continuum approach. Uh, the, the, the common equation for continuum approach. And then so property of 10, uh, based on this method, actually satisfies a conventional balance equations. So this is the first advantage for this method. The second one, uh, because actually for discrete approach, uh, we can consider the wall flow regime, consider coarse fine particles, consider particle fluid. So for this method also, we, we can, this method also is suitable for all flow regimes. So also without the assumption and including part effect of a particle properties. Okay, uh, in addition, we can, can say the, the sum properties for the continuum approach. For example, for stress, and the stress actually contributed by transport of particle and, uh, trans uh, and uh, contributed by uh, normal force, tangential force. 
So this, so we can use this uh, equation to determine the trans transmission from transport particle from the quantum force. Also, we can use the uh, uh, method to enhance analysis. So at particle scale, we can consider some property related to the discrete, discrete approach. And also we can use this method to consider the continuum approach, uh, the, the variable for continuum approach. So also we can use this method to test the assumption, uh, test the theorem or constitutive relationship in continuum description. Okay, so now we can see the few case studies. Uh, we choose a few. Uh, the first one is particle flow in Hope. The second one is particle gas flow in plus furnace. And the, the first the two cases actually is only related to spheric particle. And the third one we can say the non spheric particle. Okay, for particle flow in uh, Hope. So Hope actually is the most common device for storage and discharge, or it's a very common device in industry, especially for process industry. Okay, so with different conditions, the uh, particle in the hopper have different uh, behavior, like the mass flow and the final flow. So it started for the particle flow in hopper is uh, very important, or oh, because actually there's a, a there's a many issue regard to design of hopper and the. Uh, many issues happen in the process industry regard to hope. So understand the behavior of particle flow in hope is so very important. And also the behavior for particle in hope actually is complicated. It, or even the geometry is very, very simple. So they can say this is so very, very simple. By the particle in the hopper have four flow zones for stagnant zone, second zone, plug flow zone, converging flow zone, and the transition between zones. Okay, there's three different regimes called the static region. So at stagnant zone and the plug flow zone. And the rapid flow region, so near the R phase. The transition regime. So it's uh, a very hard actually to describe the behavior of particle for all flow regimes. So this is a challenge work actually. Even the geometry is very, very simple. So what we have done, uh, we have used discrete uh, uh, discrete element method to do the simulation about the uh, particle flow in hopper. So the particle discharged at the top and discharged uh, from the surface. So we can, based on this one, we can uh, find the particle flow pattern at different regions. So for example, in the upper part, particle flow layer by layer, and the lower part, so flow in V shape and the corner, so the particle stay at the corner. And the based on this uh, uh, flow pattern, so we can find the, the different flow zones. So stagnant zone at the corner, and the plug flow zone, converging flow zone, and the transition zone, and the different zone and the uh, velocity and the force structure are different. Uh, for example, for force structure, for force structure, we can say here at the corner and then the transitional zone, the force are uh, large. And uh, 
What's the way we can see the flow structure? We can see the relationship between some properties, like a coordination number and the property, we can find the relationship. So this is based on spatial distribution. Also, we, we can consider uh, so the disk distribution uh, about these uh, properties. And based on this distribution, we can find the effect of some particle properties. Okay, this is uh, a discrete, discrete approach. For continuum approach, we use the average method and the, based on the result from discrete element simulation. And then so we can calculate uh, some properties in continuum description. Uh, for example, for stress distribution, so we can find the stress distribution and we can link the distribution to a force structure. So we can say at the corner and the transitional zone uh, stress is large. And also we can identify the con contribution. Uh, for example, we can identify contribution for particle transport in stress. So we can find uh, the particle transport actually play a role near the orifice, but the other part is very small. So what's, what's we can say the effect of all parameters? This is very important actually in the conventional continuous description. So some if properties actually has been ignored. So we can identify the effect of all these properties on the variable for continuum description. So we find actually the fact the variables for continuum description. So it's a very important in the future development for theory. We need to include such kind of effect. Also, we can uh, clarify some issue. Uh, this is example regard to the carpet stress. And uh, there's an argument about the uh, existence of cup stress. Some people think cup stress is a lot important. Other people think cup stress is important. So we can identify or this uh, at which condition uh, the cup stress is important. So based on our simulation, we can find actually cup stress is important in some specific area or copper flow, so near wall, the cup stress is important, but far from a wall, the cup stress can be ignored. Okay, another case is we got the particle gas flow uh, in blast furnace. So uh, blast furnace is a large uh, chemical reactor to produce liquid iron. So there's a, a uh, the material inside actually so very behavior is very, very important and uh, understand the behavior is very important but uh, it's a very, very complicated so you involve gas uh, solid liquid and the powder but understand the solid flow it's very important for accurate the blast finish process modeling and the control so here we can say the particle flow uh, we only can say the particle and the gas. So we, we use a company approach of discrete element method and the computation of fluid dynamics. So we use DEM to simulate the particle phase, use the CFD to simulate the gas phase. Okay, based on the simulation, we can see the, some property based on discrete description. Uh, we can see the particle flow pattern, and we can see the force network 
and we can identify the flow region for this one. There's a few flow regions we can identify and we can find the uh, four structure at the different flow regions. And uh, then so we can use the average method of find the distribution for, for example, for stress distribution. And uh, then so we can link the stress distribution to force network. We can say actually the stress is a large uh, the stagnant zone, this zone, and the transitional zone. So it's uh, related to the force network. So based on this one, we can stand the, the distribution for stress. And also we can say the effect of a gas, or so we can say actually a gas effect the stress distribution. And another one we can say the intrinsic characteristics or we can say the internal friction coefficient. The internal friction coefficient is not constant. We can establish a relationship between the friction coefficient and the initial number. So this actual relationship is a very important relationship has been widely used in the simulation. So we can test the uh, existence of such kind of relationship. So we can say that the relationship between uh, friction coefficient and the initial number, we can find actually for whole region, we cannot find the very clear relationship. But if we divide the into some small regions, and then so we can find the clear relationship between the friction coefficient and the initial number. Okay, last one is about the uh, non-spheric particle. We can say the ellipsoidal uh, particle flow in the shear cell. So shear test, uh, typical equipment uh, which has been used uh, for match flow properties. So we can say the case, a uh, special case, we can say just the segment, we can say the non spheric particle, and uh, we can, can say the, or uh, some issue, or uh, for example, for force stress, there's a force stress, as based on discrete approach. And also we can say the properties for continuum approach. And uh, so here we focus on a very important issue of flow regime. So flow regime, uh, so actually in general, there's three different flow regime for particular system. So quarter state region, inertial flow region and the intermediate regimes. Okay, so it's very important to identify the transition between regimes. So we can say the independence of stress on volume fraction. We can say that the relationship and then we can identify a value for the volume fraction. We got the transition between the flow regions, for example, for quasi static region to intermediate flow region, and all from the initial flow region to intermediate region. And then, so we can draw flow region map. So, this is for spheric particle, this is for non spheric particle. So, we can say in the parametric space, we can find this region is for initial region, this is a quasi-static region, this is intermediate region. Okay, so we have found the volume friction play a key role for region transition. It's not only for spheric particle, for non-spheric particle as well. So also from here, we can find the critical value for volume friction. It's different for 
different uh, system. So the region transition point is a system dependent. Okay, so, so for conclusions, uh, so for the just the two approach uh, to description the particular system. So one is discrete approach, another one continuous approach. So we can use discrete element method to describe the particular system. And also we can use average method based on the data from discrete element method simulation. We can describe uh, the particular system at the continuous scale as well. So this uh, approach is very, very helpful for testing continuum relationship or the formulating the relationship between some continuum approach, uh, the, conti uh, the some variable in continuum approach. Okay, thank you. This is my presentation.